Hey guys, it's Troy here with another Pen Mail Day. Wanted to share with you a couple of things that I picked up today, or actually just showed up here in my mailbox. Um, Fountain Pen Revolution is a company out of Plano, Texas that I've dealt with previously, and I know other guys have talked about some of their pens, and you may have seen some of their videos. So um, my package just showed up here just a little bit ago. Wanted to share with you some of uh, what I got. And all orders over $25 for this particular sale. I don't know if it's an ongoing thing. I uh, get one of these free pens. It is called the Muft, M-U-F-T. And uh, this looks to be an awful lot like some of the Camlin uh, eyedropper pens. So you know, they're fairly inexpensive. I don't expect much when you get a free pen. But it looks to be uh, an eyedropper that you would just unscrew. You would put ink in here, close it up uh, by screwing it back together, and it's got a steel nib on it. I don't expect much out of this particular pen, but I'll eventually play with it and see how it does. So just added a muft to my collection, or a mooft. I'm not really sure, M-U-F-T. All right, so I just double-checked. This is a Sirwex 362, and uh, these typically are selling for about $8, and I got it when it was on sale, so I wasn't going to pay $8 for an unknown, but, you know, I figured, why not? Uh, let's just go ahead and add it to my order. So uh, you've got um, a uh, piston filler here. So you've got the piston knob, and it is a piston filler with a little ink window here. Uh, and I will eventually fill this up and play with it. And it's got the Lamy style nib. Not, I'm not saying it's a Lamy nib, but the Lamy style of nib or um, kind of looking thing. Um, and it's got a screw on cap. So I'll play with that. I picked up a bottle of uh, Diamine Red Dragon just because I didn't have a bottle of it, and I had used some uh, samples of it enough, so I said, yeah, all right, I'll pick it up, and it was on sale. And I picked up a couple of nibs, um, FPR, Fountain Pen Revolution uh, branded nibs, uh, a number five and a number six. And, you know, I've got some number six nibs. I've got a few number five nibs, but I actually had a project where I was thinking about uh, wanting to use a number five nib and I think most of the number fives I got are fine rather than medium so I went ahead and ordered uh, just a couple of nibs and then one that you may have heard of they had Himalayas uh, I got a jacket with a Himalaya brand on it uh, but um, this particular pen uh, is one of the the, the um, stalwarts or the, one of the uh, common pens that you're going to find at Fountain Pen Revolution. I do believe most of their pens are all made in India and when you smell them you, you get the you've always got a particular odor that you can usually tell like the Muft definitely it smells that way um, that you can tell they come from India and uh, this particular pen really reminds me of um, Noodlers so like a Noodlers Ahab uh, and I'll show you why here especially uh, but you know you, it's a it's a decent size. It's one of the larger pens that they've got, and it is a screw top. You've got a steel nib. Uh, this particular pen in red. Um, you know I, I've seen some others. I thought about over the past couple of years. I thought about ordering a Himalaya. I just never did um, because I was like, eh, do I really want to spend twenty some dollars, twenty five, thirty bucks on a pen uh, from India? This one was on sale. And because it was on sale, uh, he was having clearance at FPR, and it was red. And I said, that's a little bit different. I don't have any red pens sort of like this. I kind of like the swirl. I said, all right, looks good to me. Let's go ahead and order it. So I went ahead and did that. Now, it posts very nicely. One of the things about it, it is a cartridge converter pen. This particular pen has one of those plunger uh, converters. Very similar to what you see on the Noodlers Ahab which is why I said it kind of reminds me of a Noodler's Ahab. So um, you can you, you basically push this down. I'm not going to do it right now because I already did, and I filled it up with that Diamine Red Dragon. Uh, but you would push that down, stick it in the bottle of ink, and like a syringe, suck up the ink. And uh, it does fit in here. So let's give it a, a quick uh, FPR... Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya. This one has a medium nib. It has a little bit of variation to it, not much. I didn't expect a whole lot from it. All right, and now let me show you the last part of my pen mail day. This is one I've been wanting for about two years or so. This has been on my wish list, and I was able to knock another one off from my wish list. It is a modern day Waterman. 
This one is the Waterman Exception, night and day. It's got a medium nib to it. These were manufactured beginning in about 2005, so it is a modern Waterman. And it comes in the typical Waterman blue case. You open it up, and there you go. i seeing a lot of these for sale. I actually saw and was able to touch one at um, a pen show. Well, two pen shows ago. And so uh, it was on my hit list. And I said, that's pretty cool. But the guy wanted kind of a high amount of money for it, and I wasn't willing to pay that kind of price in order to find one. Uh, so I just kept looking, kept looking, and I eventually found one that was reasonable for me. So it is a slip cap, and there you go. Look at that. Big, nice, chunky pen. It's something that you, of substance you know you've got a good feeling good quality pen when you've got it in your hand and it's got the four sided so it's uh, flat on either side so it's not round you got the typical Waterman bifurcated clip up here the Waterman logo with W at the top of the pen and it's called night and day pattern because you've got the black and then you've got the gold black gold all the way around and of course you've got the Waterman Paris right there logo and on the back it says the same thing Waterman Paris. So I've always thought that um, black and gold pens were very classy. And this is one of the reasons why this particular pen caught my eye. There it says France right there. So Waterman being made in France now, has, has been for a while. So I decided this was going to be on my wish list and today it showed up. So, I was able to catch a really good deal on this. Um, I'm kind of a bottom feeder when it comes to these things once in a while. When I found one at the right price, um, I actually made an offer for it, and I was able to get it for less than the listing price, which was already quite significantly reduced compared to um, what typical retail that you're seeing, and definitely from the price that I saw at a pen show. So, I'm just going to set this down, and you look here in the box, you've got the that little pillow that it sits on, you pull it up, and in here you've got the book, you've got some Waterman cartridges, and of course it does come with a converter. That's one of the things about Waterman I've never really liked is they have always used that their proprietary converters and cartridges, but this particular pen, one of the reasons why I decided to go ahead and get it is because it was new in box. It had never been used. Somebody bought it and had never used it. So I was able to uh, go ahead and get this unused, never seen ink before. I thought that was uh, exceptional for me. So it's got Florida Blue, which you can tell it's several years old because it's no longer called Florida Blue, it's called Serenity Blue. Uh, so uh, like I said, began manufacturing in 2005 uh, for the Waterman Exception. So let's go ahead and pull out the converter. And one of the interesting things about this, instead of screwing on or off, it's got a quarter, like a quarter turn. Like, boop, there you go. It's almost like a BNC connector. I, I work in electronics and in cable, and uh, so it's almost like a BNC quarter turn connector like that, which is uh, quite interesting. I've never had a pen that actually does that. So it comes with converter, friction fit, fits down in there nice and tight. So there you go. All right, I just finished inking this thing up and I used uh, some Waterman Intense Black ink in it. Figuring that it's a black lacquered pen with the gold trim, I'll go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and slip off the cap. Does it post? Yes, it does post. It does fairly securely, but that's kind of heavy <laughs> it, in the back end there. So take that off. And you still have a nice long pen to hold on to, and I kind of like the the girth. I like the fact that it's a little bit weighty, that you know that you've got a, a pen in your hand. And it has now seen ink for the very first time since its creation. So let's uh, take a look. A Waterman Exception. I guess it was night and day. This one has the medium nib. 
And I can tell you, that medium nib is extremely smooth with a Waterman Intense Black. Extremely smooth. So my pen mail had uh, some lower end purchases and a nice expensive, <laughs> expensive to me, um, and uh, be honest with you, these probably, from what I've read, were selling brand new, um, upwards of $600 or so, depending upon where you got it from. No, I didn't pay that, but um, I can tell you that uh, this was meant to be a luxury pen and it writes like it's a luxury pen. It writes the quality that I expected to find in a nice new Waterman, and I absolutely love the black and gold. I like the day and night pattern. You can, you've seen some day and night patterns, perhaps, on some antique Waterman pens. Well, this one here, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful, and it's been on my hit list for a while, and now it's mine.